Hello and welcome back to the Whiskey Closet. It's time for another blind tasting. Let's go. Two more sample jars picked from the collection of 12 separate samples that I poured. This is from pairings that I picked in advance, pairings that I thought would be interesting to taste together. Let's go ahead and get these poured. Okay, the whole reason why I do blinds is because I'm just super interested in learning as much about bourbons and whiskeys as I can. It's a fun thing to explore. It's something you can super nerd out about. There's so much different characteristics and different flavors and different noses and different mash bills. And there's just a lot that goes into these. They age different, region matters. There's just so, so much. It's very, very fascinating. One great way to learn about the whiskey that's in the glass is to do it blind. Because when you do it blind, you can't bring any preconceived notions with you. You just have to appreciate what is in the glass and only what is in the glass. I'm going to nose them. I'm going to taste them. I'm going to score them. I'm going to figure out if I have a preference. Let's start out by nosing. Okay, interesting. What is that? Hmm. I'm not sure yet. That's very interesting. Let's try B. Very similar, but a little more relaxed, a little tamped down. Oh, wow, that's really nice. Oh, I like that a lot. I'm gonna go back to A and see if it translates. Hmm, okay, so A is a little more herbal. All right, I think it's tasting time. It's very kind of spiced. Uh, after last episode, I'm debating, is it barrel or is it rye? Uh, I was debating the same thing when I was smelling it on the nose, too, because I was wondering if I was getting a bit of a rye thing. But this one has kind of a floral character to the nose. It, you know, it does have kind of a floral thing, but almost a little bit into like a, a nail polish remover kind of acetone -y sort of character. You know, that's so funny. Sometimes if you say a word and then you try it again, boom, that's just all you can get out of it. Now this is like all that acetone -y character. This is just all I'm getting out of the nose. Wow. That's so funny. I don't really like the nose now. <laughs> Why does that happen? Moving back over to B. Oh, see, the nose on B is just super nice. Ah, more time I'm spending there. Kind of honestly, the less I'm enjoying it. I'll try A again, and I'm back to that acetone note. So I'm going to spend a little more time with them, do some more tasting, going back and forth from A to B and B to A, try to give it a score, and we'll come back and we'll talk about the scores. Okay, look, obviously, I really like whiskey, right? <laughs> come on. But some nights, it just doesn't hit me right. Some I, Honestly, some nights I pour a glass and I'm just like, nope. It just tastes astringent and bitter, and I don't enjoy it. And tonight may be one of those nights. I scored these. I just gave them twos across the board. Two for nose, two for flavor, two for interest. I'm just not enjoying them. And then I was like, that's weird, because I don't think that there's anything I poured that I wouldn't have at least enjoyed in some respect. So maybe I'm having an off night. Let's test that theory. So I'm going to test that theory by tasting a couple other things off the shelf and just seeing if those taste bad to me too. I'm getting that like nail polishy thing again. Yeah, it finishes dry and tannic again. Might be having an off night. Hmm, yeah, bummer. That does, that's not tasting good. I'm calling it. I'm thinking I'm having an off bourbon night. Not flying tonight. Finish on this. Just astringent, drying. You know? Yeah. No. 
No. No. It's not working. Maybe it's because I brushed my teeth an hour ago. Maybe it's because I had Cheater Indian for dinner. Maybe it's just... Who knows? Okay. A was Kentucky Owl Confiscated. This was a bourbon that for a very long time I might have said was one of my favorites on the shelf. Bourbon B was Four Roses Single Barrel. This is actually one that I enjoy drinking, but is definitely not one of my favorites. Just the flavor profile has just not really been doing it for me. I said this in the intro. The whole point of this channel is that I'm learning things about whiskey. I'm learning things about myself and whiskey. And that has definitely continued tonight. I didn't want to completely give up on this. So I asked my wife if she would come down and rearrange these so that they might be in a different position or they might be in the same position and I'm gonna retaste them. It's been quite a while since I cut the tape before and I think my palate has improved a little. Uh, I do think that uh, dinner and brushing my teeth, even though that was quite a while ago, had continued on and just completely wrecked my experience of these, which means I may not use any of this footage, but maybe I will because it's entertaining to watch somebody utterly fail. So, I don't know. I'm going to taste them again. We'll see what happens. Oh, that was the Knob Creek. And it tastes good. Oh, that nutty, peanutty. Ooh. Okay. I think the palate's back. Let's try again. So, here is the new A. It may or may not be different than it was before. Nail polishy. Mmm. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So I don't hate it as much as I did before, but you know what? It's actually the same overall experience. I'm getting more of a sweetness up front, although it's really subtle. I don't even know if I could classify it because of how subtle it is, but then it goes into this really interesting, really nice mid palette that's kind of sparkly and tingly. There's some spice going on. Definitely some rye character. I said that I'm getting that like acetone-y, nail polish-y, whatever, nose. And I am. There's a little bit of florally in it. A little bit of a eucalyptus thing. So I think this is rye. And I think that spice that I'm getting is probably also largely from rye. There's a nice, yeah, there's this nice like mid-palate tingle. But that finish is still just harsh and not nice not enjoying it let's go to b the new b this nose is given up a little more there's that acetone note not there yeah that's a rye there's some rye in there it's not like the eucalyptusy rye note though but there's some of those floral rye kind of characters in there a little bit of a honey, a little bit of a hay, something not earthy, but in that space. Mm. All right, I'm I'm positive. A is still Kentucky Owl. B is still Four Roses. We'll go ask my wife if I'm right. The Four Roses, the front of the palette is so really nice. Like, I really liked it. Honey sweetness, and then it fades into a really nice rye spice. But then the finish, I don't like. The way that the rye lingers through, the character that that presents with is just kind of a drying... Mm. No, I don't, I don't like the way that it finishes. So overall, I end up not really enjoying it. If I was going to rescore these now, I'm going to stick with just twos across the board for the Kentucky Owl. If I work really hard and I focus on licorice, if I think licorice, I can kind of enjoy it a little more. That final note that goes harsh is still happening. But when I think licorice, it's a little more pleasant. It becomes a little more savory. 
but ultimately it's still landing in a really a strange place that I don't enjoy. This has been a very interesting night. I actually think I probably will let this land on YouTube. Please forgive me for the fact that this was a complete failure and that in the last video I didn't know that the things that I was tasting were high rye and that the first video was a complete failure too. I'm new at this. That's the point. This is how we learn. <laughs> Maybe? We'll see. Hey love, did you switch some? I knew it!